is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this will be the spoiler free review for smile 2 which is written and directed by parker finn once again it is starring naomi scott kyle gowner lucas gage peter jacobson dylan galula ray nicholson and several others so this is revolving around the character of sky riley pop sensation sky riley who begins to experience a series of increasingly disturbing and daunting events as she is about to go on a new world tour and is forced to face her dark past to regain control of her life before it spirals out of control so smile 2 turns the dial up by exploring the dark side of the music industry resulting in a highly effective sequel naomi scott delivers a career best performance as the grammy award winning pop star sky riley immaculate has immaculate sound design stellar camera work just as the last film did and a feeling of dread that stays with you even after the credits roll still i'm not a fan of these jump scares that happen excessively but there are a few in here that are far more impressive than the last film all in all i would say as big as this film gets it is a bit messier too at times but as a whole i think this is the stronger film i think this is the stronger film when it com when you're comparing it to the way it explores its protagonist i think that's the biggest strong suit that saves this one in comparison to the original which is still effective but this sequel is blowing it out of the water particularly in the department with its character work so Sky Riley has been away from the spotlight for a year since a brutal accident occurred during her last tour. She has severed relationships with multiple individuals, including her ex-boyfriend, a childhood best friend. She has a substance abuse history and her mother, who is also her manager, seems more interested in pushing her daughter back into the spotlight instead of recognizing that her daughter is broken and not ready for this new tour. Smile 2 isolates its protagonist so well that I couldn't help but hope, wish, and pray that Sky overcomes what is about to enter her life. No one around her acknowledges her as a human being, which immediately wins me over as a viewer compared to Rose from our last film, whereas Rose had a support system of sorts. Sky is surrounded by people who already don't trust her. They gaslight her. They doubt her sanity immediately because of some other prior things i've talked about her history of substance abuse they only see her as a meal ticket finn spends a remarkable amount of time thrusting us into this chaotic world that shines a spotlight on how the music industry chews up these stars before disposing of them enhancing the entity's intimidating nature by letting it function more as a symbol of the industry preying on these people in this case sky that's so eager to exploit her at every turn until she cracks under pressure Finn holds in on the trauma theme that was introduced during the last movie while taking us through every disgusting corner of the industry with Sky. As a result, we have a protagonist that is irresistibly relatable because no one wants to be treated like this. And it's just a reminder that celebrities are human beings and their emotions are valid. Yes, the other characters in this story are unlikable, they're one-dimensional, and they're forgettable. But Smile 2 uses that to its advantage in order for us to always be on Sky's side. If not for this, Smile 2 would suffer because I'd be more invested in why I have to sit here and wait for Sky to figure out what's going on. Finn doesn't allow that to even be my focus. Thanks to several anxiety-inducing sequences that ratchet up the terror at every turn. My biggest gripe with Smile 2 is is also another reason i love it ironically but a chunk of this story seems up for interpretation in ways that are both satisfying and aggravating on one end it's digging deeper into the psychological aspect but on another what exactly has this entity been doing with sky if what i'm seeing isn't completely real so you'll see what i mean there's a lot of sequences where they toy with you and give you this sense of comfort rip it out from under you and those are some of the more effective ways the film is scary just from giving you that false sense of comfort that is when the smile movies are at their best when it comes to giving you terror not the jump scares i think parker finn should really double down on some of the sequences that aren't so reliant on jump scares because those scenes are just as terrifying because it's playing with your psyche it's like, wait, I just saw this. I know I saw it. It's like, oh, no, you actually didn't. That wasn't real. So Smile 2 
has some body horror in it this time around that is quite unnerving and had me wincing constantly. I believe there was some in the original, but the stuff featured in this just blows it out of the water. Smile 2 has some effective humor in it as well, which isn't always easy to achieve in a horror film. The dialogue exchanges all were believable. Everything between the characters felt like real conversations. That's always a highlight in the screenplays, considering some of the films and TV shows where the dialogue feels forced and feels like this is not stuff that people would actually say. Now, let's dive into Naomi Scotts, who I don't even know where to begin because she blew me away. I didn't necessarily have expectations for her going in, but I've also never seen her deliver such a visceral performance the way she does during Smile 2. I'm always happy to see Disney stars from my childhood rise to the occasion, and she more than delivers. Sky's eyes tell us everything we need to know the moment we meet her, thanks to Scott's brilliant facial expressions throughout. The switches from calm to unhinged always strike a nerve because I actually care about what happens to Sky. Kyle Gowner's return to Joel allows him to deliver a solid performance on his growing resume as a Scream King, and the rest of the cast were terrific, terrific as well. Lucas Gage comes in second to Scott for me. The emotional anguish these two convey is just unreal at times. It's on a whole nother level. Pacing-wise, Smile 2's two-hour runtime never lost its momentum. It starts hot, finds its rhythm, and every scene feels necessary. The cinematography remains spectacular, especially the camera work that teleports you right into the shoes of the characters. Not only that, the way the camera follows certain objects guides us to the threat. Only to linger on it for a second, give us a few cross cuts to let your heart rate go ballistic, and then it slams on the terror. All of that is just genius and kept the atmosphere intense at all times, kept everything revolving sky intense, kept me interested in seeing her overcome this. Everything about Smile 2 is just dialed up to another level compared to the first one even if the script is a bit messy when it comes to the lore and some of the mechanisms or the mannerisms of the entity which i would still say is doing a fabulous job trying to preserve that mystique we still don't know a lot about it we know how it operates we know its motivations in terms of just i guess how it operates but we're not digging into it to the point where it's undermining how terrifying it is and the way parker keeps that intact highly effective I would say Smile 2 is one of the best horror sequels I've seen in recent memory. Uh, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.